Welcome back everybody to Desktop Inventions. Now today we're going to go over the five reasons I think you should start 3D printing. So let's dive right in. So the first reason is you have the ability to create things. You can take this seemingly useless string that we call filament and you can turn it into amazing creations such as this simple USB holder decorative Star Wars ornaments or this awesome Nintendo Switch dock add-on with RGB control. And with all the amazing things you can create, one caveat is there's probably things you shouldn't create from 3D printing, such as screwdrivers or nails, screws, drill bits, things of this nature are just not the right things to 3D print and won't hold up to the task. Wait a second, let's check this out. Can you actually 3D print fingernails? Well, turns out that's actually a thing. I'll have to add that to my to-do list. Also, you should not print any sanitary things with 3D printing either, because things like spoons, forks, bowls, or contact cases, uh, it's just not very clean to print those. Although the printing itself is pretty clean, it's very difficult to clean the part afterwards. There's little crevices in between the layers, and that can fill up with dirt and get bacteria growing over time, which is just not good for your health. So the second reason to start 3D printing is if you need a new hobby. Maybe you have a seasonal hobby that's out of season, maybe you just entered retirement, or for whatever the reason, maybe you just have more free time on your hands. 3D printing is a great hobby to start. You can do anything from creating your own designs and printing them out, like this Nintendo Switch game holder that's shaped like a heart, or this Nintendo Switch game holder that's shaped like a cube. Or you can just browse the internet with existing websites like Thingiverse.com or Thangs and you can find 3D models from there that you can download directly and print out with very low effort. Also if you like upgrading things, 3D printing is one of the best hobbies you can find. There's dozens of designs out there that you can 3D print out to upgrade your 3D printer, creating sort of this endless feedback loop. Now what other hobbies out there can you upgrade your hobby with the hobby itself? Now that's pretty awesome. And there's always the caveat to the hobby that you might not use it. You know the type of person that gets a new tech gadget and uses it for about two weeks, and then after that, it sits in the corner and collects dust. Well, this can happen with 3D printing too. Now, don't let this happen to you. To avoid this, I encourage before you even purchase a 3D printer, go browse some websites and find some models that you want to print and get a list of you know, 10, 20 models that you want to print before you even get your printer. That way, once it arrives, you'll have tons of things to keep you busy and sort of force yourself into the hobby. You don't want to be one of those people with a 3D printer in the corner of their office that just uses a hat hanger. And the third reason you should start 3D printing is you can use it to give gifts to your friends and your family. Now, this is a little bit tricky because 3D printed gifts can come off as cheap or tacky if not done well. So don't go on to Thingiverse and just take the first thing you see, print it out, and gift it to all your relatives before Christmas. They probably won't like that. Instead, you might try and make something personalized and custom for them, such as a custom nameplate or one of these lithophane 3D printed pictures. These are pretty cool because you can only see the image when you hold it up to the light. For more on lithophanes, you can check out this video here. So as well as giving gifts to your friends and family, 3D printers may also annoy your friends and family. So some of the lower cost 3D printer use low cost components, which means the stepper motors and the fans are pretty loud. For example, when I first got my Ender 3 V2, it was quite loud, not quite to hair dryer level, but it was pretty loud. And you can check out in this video, I did quite a few upgrades to actually make it quiet. And now it's even more quiet than my laptop. So that was a huge improvement. Also, if you plan to get a resin printer, which is a printer that has the vat of liquid in the bottom, just be aware that liquid can be a little bit smelly sometimes. Those with a sensitive nose, it may be a little bit annoying to them. And reason number four you should start 3D printing is you can save a little bit of money. Not a whole lot, but there's a few penny pinchers here and there, such as this uh, toothpaste squeezer, this interesting soap saver, which once installed, you can save a little bit of soap on each hand wash as well as this iPhone cable saver, which will make your iPhone cable last a little bit longer. So aside from getting back at big toothpaste corporations and big soap corporations, you can also save a few pennies in other ways, and that is fixing broken things. 
You'll know you're a true 3D printing enthusiast when something breaks around the house and your first thought is, I bet I can print something to fix that. So a few examples of this might be a broken vacuum cleaner attachment or a broken camera mount or broken mounting bracket. So all it takes is fixing and saving a few things that you would have otherwise thrown away to start saving some real bucks. Now, a very real caveat to saving money is the cost of a 3D printer. So it's definitely not free, but let's take a look at how much it actually does cost. So if we take a look at a 24 hour time period of printing, we have two parts, the filament and the electricity cost. So first looking at the filament, we have about a one kilogram spool here that you can buy on Amazon or other places for 10 to $20. And I've found generally if you print for a 24 hour period, you will use between 120 and 200 grams of material depending on your settings. Let's use 200 grams as a worst case and simplicity for math. If you buy a one kilogram spool divided by 200 grams, that gives you five 24 hour periods of printing from that spool. So if you buy a $20 spool, that's $4 of material per 24 hour period. So if you buy a $15 spool, that's $3, a $10 spool, then that would be $2 per printing day. Now let's look at the electricity. Your average generic 3D printer, like an Ender 3, will use an average around, of around 150 watts if you're printing on a standard PLA material. 24 hours in a day multiplied by 0.15 kilowatts will give you 3.6 kilowatt hours. If your electricity is 10 cents per kilowatt hour, that's about 36 cents. So generally, we can expect 2 to $5 per 24 hour printing period of cost. And for that two to five dollars and 24 hours of printing time, you can expect to get 10 to 15 smaller prints, something of this size, or one larger print, something about this size. So just to give you some scale and some perspective on how far your dollar goes. Reason number five, there's never been a better time to start 3D printing than now. You can find tons of great entry-level 3D printers online for less than $200. And in addition to that, you don't even have to have 3D modeling software experience to start printing. Once you get your printer, you can set it up in a couple hours time right out of the box. Then you can go online, download a few files, and 10 to 15 minutes within the slicing software, send that to your printer and you're on your way. And although it's never been easier, there still is a learning curve and you still will have some problems that come up. But don't get discouraged. Any problem you run into, there's people online that have run into this problem before. In fact, I'll put a link to a very good troubleshooting guide down in the description below. This guide goes through and shows a lot of visuals to problems that you'll have, as well as tells you about the root cause and the countermeasures and how to fix them. And there you have it. Those are my five reasons of why you should start 3D printing. If you've liked this video, please leave a like or comment down below, and we'll see you next time on Desktop Inventions.